The Prime Minister's wife, Mrs Jenny Morrison, has politely said her piece over that exchange with Grace Tame at the Lodge on Australia Day. I want my daughters to grow up to be fierce, strong, yeah. independent, amazing people. And I think they can still do that and show kindness to other people and be polite and have manners. Well, right on cue, uh, Mrs Morrison has been the subject of vile attacks online, including this tweet from journalist Lucy Morris Ma. Australia is disappointed in Jenny Morrison, it says, being utterly self-absorbed and hugely woefully devoid of intelligence or sensitivity. From a journalist. Goodness me. Let's see what my next guest makes of all of that. It's time for Word on the Street with Erin Rowland. She's joining me now. All right, Erin, you're in touch with the real world. I know a lot of people like Jenny Morrison. What's your take on the program last night and, of course, the, the fallout today? Well, that tweet you just showed, Peter, is appalling. I, I mean... When you do a show like 60 Minutes, don't get me wrong, you open yourself up to scrutiny and that's part and parcel, that's fair enough. The Morrisons knew exactly what the reaction would be, that people would have an opinion. But they should have an opinion on what was said, on what her remarks were. That tweet from someone who, who is attempting to be a journalist was awful. It was vile, it was nasty, it was a, a character assassination. Have an opinion on what she said. If you don't agree with her, her opinion, and it was very respectfully communicated, you can go out publicly and say that. But I thought that was vile. But I can tell you something. If she was the wife of a, a Labor politician or, or someone affiliated with the left and a Conservative commentator had put out a tweet even one-tenth as nasty as that. Can you imagine the backlash? The feminazi Twitter brigade would have come out in the defence of the woman. Absolutely, it would have been absolutely deafening. But as we know that if you're a conservative woman, not even a conservative woman, if you're just married to a conservative politician, then you're not afforded that kind of protection from all of them who claim to care about women and women not being attacked or abused. Uh, let's take a look at what the rest mm -hmm. of Australia thinks. I don't think the uh, Prime Minister's wife is that relevant to what uh, the Prime Minister thinks. I was very upset because I like Morrison and I'm going to vote for him. So for me it was very frustrated, people are accusing him and you know all this stuff. You know I don't think that that slagging off is very helpful really. I mean I, and I think she should be more in the forefront, Stick, not, not sticking up to him but being more Visible, absolutely. I don't think it's about him, but personally, not about about it, you know any, anything to do with, with the politics or something like that. But yeah, stuff, if it's stuff, personal stuff about him. Yeah, we should hear from her. I can understand how she feels, um, but I don't think she lashed out. I think she just uh, she was hurt by it all, and they were her feelings. And so, Peter, that's the kind of reaction that you would and should expect if you do a program like 60 Minutes. Some people liked it, some people didn't. But there were no personal attacks there, no one saying she's devoid of intelligence based on one program. I thought it was really nasty. Well, just on that point, do you think politics is getting nasty? You're a daughter of a politician. Now, you're also in the public eye, so I suppose you've got a thicker skin than most. But I don't know that Australians like what I would regard this... Uh, Americanisation, the, the personality, the personal attacks getting into our politics, do they? It's a great question and I've thought a lot about this today and particularly over the last few months and as, as has been fairly widely reported, I was approached to run in the seat of Eda Monero a little while ago and I thought long and hard about it and you mentioned that I'm already in the public eye and yes, it can be a pretty nasty place but I, I think politics might even be ten times worse than, than the kind of things I've been subjected to and that's pretty vile. Look, I don't know if it's worse. I don't know if it's more toxic. I mean, you were around and you'd know better than anyone. Tony Abbott was absolutely crucified on occasion. Rudd Gillard, Rudd era was awful and very, very toxic from both sides of politics. I think the difference now is there are more platforms. So you might have had Betty saying to her husband, John, ten years ago, that bloke's a tool. Now Betty can go on Instagram or Twitter and, and share it publicly and it, it's pretty nasty. The other issue is this 24-hour news cycle and clickbait. So the story that you spoke a lot about over the past week or so about the text message saga, you don't just get one story on that, you get 5,000 stories on that. Every time someone makes a comment or someone's asked, you get an updated story. People click on it, they get advertising dollars. So I think there's just a lot more coverage. I think politics has always been pretty nasty, but as we always do in this segment, let's take a look at what people on the street think. 
probably just as nasty as any other one that's ever been. They're always pretty nasty. It is very nasty. It's very shameful for Australia people. Never happened before like this. Definitely feel more personal. So, yeah, I want to be a bit more professional about you know, someone doing their job. Well, it's just gossip, isn't it? I'll be voting Liberal, darling. <laughs> Whether that's right or not wrong, I don't know. But I'm, I'm, and I've been a Labor voter for a long time, but I just can't stand them now. So I feel very let down by the Labor Party. So I'm voting Scotty. I think hopefully there might be a spill, but we'll see. So again, Peter, a mixed response. You know, we, we don't just talk to people that we think, you know, might vote one way or the other. But as you can see, people are still communicating their thoughts in a respectful, polite way. Who would have thought? Maybe they can teach Canberra something. Erin, brilliant <laughs> as always. See you next week.